Good morning. I hope that you can see me. And what I'm going to do today is my husband asked me last night, I asked him what did he want me to cook today. And he asked me, would I make him um, a roast beef pot pie? And I said, sure, I don't mind. So I figured I could do a video on it. But I'm going to do it in the same style as I did the chicken cobbler. The only thing different, two different things I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use milk. And I got self-rising flour that I've already sifted here with literally a smidgen of garlic and onion powder in it just to give it a flavor. All right, so I'm going to walk you through the steps. I got to melt my butter first. Let's get it in there and we'll talk about ingredients. As always, everything, everything will be listed below. I've already sprayed my pan just for cleaning purposes so nothing is stick. You don't have to. This is something I do. I usually use whatever brand's cheapest. It just so happened I had a coupon for this. Still using this. All right, that is out of the way. All right, we're going to get our butter, then we're going to move things along slowly right here. Oops, sounds like it might be ready. Not quite. All right. And I'm making this with two cans of roast beef, but we'll go through the ingredients in just a second. Let's see if this is melted. It's not quite melted. It just likes to bubble and pop. Let's give it another second or two because I want all that butter on that bottom. And I'm using salted butter. You may use unsalted butter if you want, but I always just get salted. No specific reason. So, just about there. I would have done this before I started because I got everything lined up, but this is one of those things that if you've done it and I was setting things up, it would have solidified again. All right, we got it going now. One whole stick of, I'm using salted butter, just pour it in there and get it all out of that bowl and just sort of smear it out. I'm going to leave him right there. Now, I'm going to take... My two cans, I got this from Dollar General a good long time ago. Back when it was like $2.50 a can a few years ago. It'll last forever. Um, and this is two 12.5 ounce cans. You can get it at Walmart, Kroger, anywhere. All right, I'm going to sit this over here. That's what we're going to do now is we're going to, I got this in here and I've drained most of the gravy off of it. It's roast beef and gravy, but I wanted to leave it a little moist. So you don't want to stir it. You just want to lay it out best you can. This is another no stir. Try to make sure. The only two of us here. We're trying to make sure everybody gets a roast beef and gravy. If you got a family. He'll be the one pretty much to eat the whole thing. So. Get all that roast beef and gravy out of there. All right. Okay. Excuse <coughs> me. Next, I've gotten a can of just potatoes that I've cut up and two cans of mixed vegetables I've drained and rinsed, okay? Those are in this bowl, okay? And I've stirred them all together and you wanna make sure they're evenly distributed across everything, no stirring. Do not stir. He wanted a lot of vegetables, that's why I added a can of potatoes. He does love some vegetables. And if you want to see how I do a pot pie like this, there is a video on my channel somewhere. Um, I'm not sure how to do the link thing, but try to figure it out. Um, it's on down a little further, probably last year, maybe. Uh, all right. 
I'm going to put those few little juices from the potatoes in there too. Smooth it out a little bit. Now, the next thing I got is a bag of frozen seasoning mix. I've already, I've already sweated down together. It's just um, celery, onions, red peppers, green peppers, and parsley flakes and all that. All right, I want to get that on there. And that was a whole um, 10 ounce bag, I thought it was. I wanted to make sure I didn't want to tell you a few. Went in and sweated those down beforehand. And how I sweat mine down to make it easier instead of getting the skillet and stuff out. I spread them out in a bowl and add a little water. And then I add a little salt to it that will pull all those juices out. And then I squeeze. <clears throat> squeeze everything out of it, all the water out of the excess water. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to, no salt, because everything is going to be pretty salty once you finish. I am going to add pepper. Add your liberty, however y'all like pepper. I'm going to add a hard amount. He can add more to it. I'm not a pepper freak. He is. No salt. I'm not putting any salt in it. Well, then I grabbed the wrong one. Hold on. I want to open a brand new one when I got one open. This is just Noyer's Beef Bouillon, and it is salty. Now, you want to sort of do it a little bit here and there. A teaspoon of that. Okay. Now, as many of you know that watch me, I mix my garlic and onion powder in a thing so I don't have to mix it as I go. So we're going to say a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and half a teaspoon of onion powder. There again, you do not want to stir anything. All right, we are through with that part. Can move him over there. Now I've gotten one cup of self-rising flour and about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder in here that I have mixed and all that good stuff together. And I have one cup of beef broth. <clears throat> now you may have to add a little water because. I'll show you the consistency of this in just a moment. Okay. Just want to pour that whole cup in there. And we're going to see if we need to add some more. We will. You want it like pancake batter. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. So it's one cup and one cup. Good. And there's a few lumps in it. Don't worry about it. It'll work itself out in the oven, I promise you. It smells good. I have my oven preheated at 375 because my oven's an older one. And ovens vary. You want to make sure this is sort of whipped good. All right, that is whipped good. We're going to take our spoon and we're going to try to spoon this over if we can. I want to try to make sure it covers everything. And you, you don't stir, but you can push in corners. See how I push that? It's not going to hurt. You just want it to be like layered. You want that batter to go right up to the corner. And it could have been a little thinner, but it'll be all right. Because our next layer is going to help fix that. This smells amazing and it isn't even cooked.
I'm going to get that little corner right there. Just want to make it a little pretty if you can. Okay. He ate every bit of the last one I made. No one got any of it. He ate. I, yeah, what what y'all saw me eat is the chicken cobbler I did. That was it. He ate everything else in a couple of days. Okay, now our next layer is um whenever I opened my can of beef and gravy, I poured them in this bowl. I drained a little bit of it in here. And what is in here is a can of cream of mushroom and a can of this and the, the juices off of that roast beef. Okay, and I just, you want to whip that together. And you want to make sure it's whisked pretty good. Okay. And I had already whisked it up quite a bit beforehand. So. Okay, now you want to just slowly drizzle all of this over the top. And again, you do not want to stir. This is where your magic is going to come in at. And this equaled up, I meant to tell you, this equaled up to like a cup of broth. Because whatever would lift, I gave it, poured it in a dog dish. Now, as you see, that is pretty dead blasted full. So what I'm going to do is, I got my old pan I keep up here. You don't want to cover this. You don't want to stir it. You want to leave it exactly like it is. And I'm going to move this. It is really heavy. <clears throat> to my pan. And this should bake for about, I would think, an hour and 20 minutes maybe. But I'll let you know when I come back. I'll see y'all back then. And when I come back, I will let this rest for about 15 minutes before I come back. So you'll have to stay here with me. Because you're going to want it to rest. It's going to be boiling. All right, I will make sure you center that on that pan. I'll see you then. I brought you back just for a brief second. It finished. It took it an hour and about 10, 12 minutes, and I browned it on top just a little bit. But it's got to cool because it is literally still boiling. And when it cools enough, the crust is here. It's done. Everything's great. It's bubbled all the way through. And whenever it completely cools, I will bring you back and we'll taste it. All right. All right. I am back. And it has actually set to like an almost touch the pan. It's going to jiggle a little bit. It could have set a little bit longer. But I didn't want to hold y'all. I'm going to taste a corner of it. Not a lot. And as it sits, it will firm up more. Smells absolutely amazing. I don't want a lot, but I do want some of everything. See? Very, very, very good. Absolutely amazing. Yes. Potatoes in here, the vegetables. Hmm. Very good. Good beef flavor. You get little bits of beef all the way through it, right in there. As I said before, I will have all the um, ingredients and everything below in the directions. I hope you'll give it a try. It is extremely good. Thank you for joining me. I do appreciate and love each and every one of y'all. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.